talking about in last lecture. Okay. So last lecture we, we talked about the plasmonics. So the comparable photonics plasmonic is a lossy dispersive medium. Okay. It allows a very ultra small device. And uh, I think the interaction between the uh, plasmonic nanostructure is a surface wave, which is very different from photonic crystal. For photonic crystal, it's a, print, a propagating wave will interfere with each other. Okay? So I think the first important thing is the Drew and Lorentz model. Drew and Lorentz model. It's a model for permittivity of the metal. So uh, finally, when we know that the uh, permittivity of the metal can be writing as a, a mathematical form, something like this. Okay. So the the first form is a Joule part. This part is capture the intraband transition. Intraband transition. Okay. It's uh, describe the electron electron interaction. This is uh, important. So this is uh, intraband transition. It's another part is the Lorentz form. For, for two of the part, it's, it's a free electron. It's a capture of free electron. Free electron in a conduction band. Free electrons in conduction band. This is the first part. The second part is the Lorentz model. Okay, it captures the interband transition. It's a bond electron. Yeah, generation uh, typically it can generation electron hole pairs. This term is responsible for lossy, it's mainly responsible for lossy term okay. or permittivity. Uh, this part is a lossy term or imaginary part permittivity. And the intro band is uh, responsible for the rear part of permittivity. It's a rear part. This is a fundamental difference between the two terms. Let me add a cousin. This is a, a interval band, this is a conduction band. This is K, this interval transition. So, this is very important. So, so most of uh, dielectric material compared to metal. Okay. Most of dielectric material it only has a second term, it's a Lorentz term. So dielectric material is a no uh, intraband transition, it's only an interband. So it's a, it's a bond electron, okay, for a dielectric material, it's a bond electron, okay. For metal it's a free electron, okay. So it has a plasmonic effect. So the intraband transition is very, very important because it has the support of plasmonic effect. I mean, the rare part of imson is small than the earth. This is a physical origin of plasmonic effect. So this is the first thing we talk about this. The second thing we talk about this is a, is a, a dispersion of the surface plasma. Okay, dispersion relation of surface plasma. For surface plasma, the K rho equal to Kc of imson dielectric, imson metal, over Emerson dielectric plus Emerson metal. Okay. For air and the metal interface, consider this uh, semi infinity problem. Semi infinity problem. The dispersion relation omega k. Dispersion relation will something okay, like this. 
So at this point for air metal, this is omega p over SQR because it satisfies the resonance condition Imson metal omega plus Imson dielectric equal to zero. This is called the resonance condition. For surface plus, okay, this condition means this is uh, at this point. Okay. So this uh, And from this distortion curve, we know that the airline, the location of airline, is something like this. This is air line. To exact, to excite the surface plasma, we face a uh, momentum mismatch problem. Okay, this is very similar to excite the guiding mode. Because guiding mode, you, you, you give you give a omega. You can see you give omega. You can see here. Okay, that's a mismatch. That's a mismatch. I means the key rule, the tangential wave number of surface plasma always larger than k zero. It's always larger than k zero. This is so the surface plasma. It's also a very special guided wave. For the side guided wave, you must solve this momentum mismatch problem. Okay. This is a problem you should solve. So one way to excite the surface plasma is to use a dipole. The dipole source, because dipole source has a rich evanescent wave. Okay, this is metal. This is air. Okay, so you put a dipole source. This is dipole. They can excite the surface plasma that has positive charge, negative charge, negative charge, positive charge, negative charge, positive charge, something like this. So they can excite the surface plasma. Okay. This is a surface plasma, it's a similar as, as a, a electron density wave. They decay along two direction. They decay along two direction. And the propagate if a dipole is here, they can propagate a lot to the different direction. Side. It's surface plasma. Wait. It's also surface plasma. I change the color. along the uh, horizontal direction, but they decay vertical along the vertical. So this you can use the dipole to the excite because the dipole has evanescent wave. And the dipole location should be very close to the interface so that evanescent wave does not uh, decay, uh, does not uh, vanish. You know? If you're very far from, they cannot excite because the evanescent spectral will, will decay over. Another method, very, very popular, very important, is prism coupling. Use prism coupling. Okay. The prism coupling is very important. Okay, so I think the very famous setting, we call it a Kressman. Okay, they use the prism. Okay, they use the prism. Okay, 
the inside the surface from along the side, okay. along this interface, change the color, along this interface. This is an uh, interesting thing. Okay. So why the inside the surface plasma? This is a brain wave, and they do some greeting. Photo reflecting, reflect back, and become a detector. Okay, so if you want to excite the surface plasma and this air, we call this air, in air, an AU interface, the K rho, okay, the K rho should be larger than K0, okay. So the plane wave now is in prism. Okay. This is a K1. Okay, this is a K1. So the K1 sine theta, I mean this something theta, it has some theta. Everything has theta here. Okay, this is called K1. This is K0. So K1 sine theta can be equal to K0. Okay, the phase mesh condition now set it for. Because K1 is larger than K0, right? It's dielectric. So they can be something exciting, the surface parts. Okay, this is the reason why they can be excited at this air and the AU interface. <coughs> But I go down. It cannot excite the surface plasma at the at the at the top interface. Okay, because this interface surface plasma is a prism and a AO. You use prism in prism. You cannot excite the surface plasma support at between the prism and the. Metal, okay, but if you use plane wave in prism, you can excite the surface plasma supported between the air and the metal, okay, because the wave number of prism is larger than the air, so from this condition, okay, so from this condition, the K1 larger than K0, so K1 sin theta in tangential wave number can be matched to K0, okay, K0 is a, is a, uh, uh, is K rho is a, a surface plot, is a tangential wave number for this surface plot at the air and AU interface. Okay. This is a reason why it's kind of exciting. So this is a, a very important. Another thing, surface plot is very sensitive to the environment. So I give an example. Another is called auto O. C O T G O called O T G O. Okay. If I use auto setting, this is a let me substrate. This is a A U maybe O O A G or zero go. Okay. I put I put initially I put some some we call this a antigen at this interface that I shine the light okay we shine the light shine the light and do the evanescent uh, way something like this okay you can excite the surface plasma because it's evanescent way okay the clear this evanescent way Okay, at this situation, at this situation, they have two kind of the reflective wave. One reflective wave is direct, is just by the total reflection. Another is evanescent wave inside the surface plasma, return back. Okay, it's another. You can cancel out. So as the resonance frequency. As a resonance frequency, something 
Maybe. And the resonance frequency is resonance This is the angle, this is the reflection, this is a, uh, some theta, zero, okay, it has a reflection D. Because I said it's very similar to the uh, temple couple mode theory, okay, the so one reflection is by the prism, okay, another is evidence away from the prism that inside the surface plasma, then it has a reflection again, but two reflections can cancel it out, okay, at a resonance point, okay. It's similar to call uh, uh, it has a very strong absorption in here. Okay, so it's a very reflection deep in here. Okay, so they have reflection deep. They have resonance point. Okay. They're quite similar to this uh, temporal theory. Okay, so at this point, okay, this is initially. Then I found this theta zero, so I change, I change the environment. This initially I put the antigen in this interface. But here, I have substrate, some, some metal material, this antigen, okay. I put antibody, antibody may be something, uh, it has cell, maybe it has some cancel cell, or has normal cell. For cancel cell, it has antibody, okay. But the normal cell they know, has no this antibody. But antibody plus antigen, okay, their reaction, their reaction, okay, reaction. So they change, they change the permittivity, okay, they change the permittivity here. Maybe Emerson Neal, we call this. We change the permittivity of this layer, okay. So they shift. They shift this angle. Okay. Initially, it has theta zero. Now, because I said because the environment, electromagnetic environment change. Okay, here we call it theta one. Okay. You will find this can shift because antibody. I uh, have antigen will reaction, they generate some new chemicals. Okay? If a normal cell it has no antibody, so everything has the same with antigen. Okay. When it action them, they change the permittivity, so this angle suddenly change. This is very, very sensitive. So if you can obser observe this change, then you know it's some kinds of cell. Okay. In 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 in, in some cell, you, you can find this. They call it biosensing. This application, very important application. So see the shift of this uh, minimum angle. Okay. Okay. So this is a important application for surface plasma and excitation. Okay. So I finish this part. This is a second way to excite it, right? So first way we will dipole, second way we will print them, the how about third way? The third way is to use a grating or periodic structure. Coupling, coupling, or use floating mode, or block mode. Okay. So we just re we just refresh your memory. I just want to refresh your memory. We learn we learn the periodic structure. We know the block theorem. Block theorem said that the the, the E field, okay. They said E feel something, okay, X, Y, Z, equal to some, they have some field, maybe a lot of direction, I just feel scatter. Okay, maybe E, Z, okay, for breathing, okay, this TM wave, this equal to some E, I, K, Z, Z, okay, breathing along Z direction. It's breathing. 
with the purest direction along that direction, then u x y z. Here, the u x y v is a pure function. This is the lattice constant A. So you learn it in the you learn the theory in the photonic crystal part, right? This is just there's a modulation of a periodic function with this uh, uh, E i k d z. Okay. So here, if the E i k z is a periodic function, so I can expand it of this periodic function uh, with a Fourier series. Okay, K Z Z. I expand it with the Fourier series U. Okay, maybe K then M, I call it M, that'd be better. U M X Y uh, E I sorry, it's not right. Not I can this K before this is Z, this, this along this direction. This is X, this is Y, it should be I, K, Y, Y. So, okay, so uh, along Y direction, this is a continual translation environment. So it has E, I, K, Y, Y, Z. Along that direction, it has a discontinuous translation environment. Say something like this. So I, K, Y, Y. So here, I just expand it with the uh, plus 2 pi p or m, 2 pi a m. Okay. Then it has z here. I k, this is something like this. So finally, I get I k y y. E I K Z Z Sigma M U M X Y E I two pi or A M Z something like this. We get this uh, expansion. So this this K Z is arbitrary. This is a broken mode. So if a plane wave, that's plane wave the incidence. So Kz here, due to phase matching, goes to K0, sine theta. Okay. It's plane wave, it's theta. Okay. So finally, the broken mode is K0 sine theta plus 2 pi A or M. Okay. Plus 2 pi A or M. So this is uh, this is uh, finally the momentum along tangential direction. This should be equal to k rho. Okay, k rho is surface plasma. It's omega c over epsilon metal plus epsilon dielectric over epsilon dielectric multiplied by epsilon metal. Okay. This is a phase matching condition. Okay. This is a phase matching condition. Okay, you can see that. You can see that. You can see that. Okay, initially k0 sine theta. This is a k rho. The k rho should be larger than k0. <coughs> right, it should be larger than k0 because this is a kind of a guiding mode. Okay, so here 2 pi over a equal to m. This is additional momentum provided by the periodic structure uh, due to this floating theorem or floating mode. Okay, the so m here can be to 0, minus 1, minus 2, positive 2. Okay. This is three many many. Okay. Maybe at some m, at some m, this is can be satisfied, so they can be inside the surface plasma. This is a very powerful method because this is a periodic structure. Okay, this is a periodic structure. So this is a quite different. So I just show some figure. You can see here. This is initially this is a tangential uh, wave number of a plane wave. This is a tangential 
wave number for the surface fast number. You can see it has a mismatch because this is a smaller, this is a larger. Okay. So we wish to add some additional momentum. This additional momentum just m over g, m equal to 2 pi over p. This is by the periodic structure and provide by the, by the flow field mode. So they can excite. You can see this is the way you can see the excited in the periodic structure that can propagation in the plane. Okay. This is the way to that. Okay. They also can excite it with the same field with the hole. Okay. You add the periodic hole and excite it because this. Okay. this is a uh, intuitive picture. An intuitive picture. This is an interesting picture. You can see this is air, this is air cone. You can see it's a, it's a, this is air cone, this is omega equal to C. This is all the possible, this 3D. This is all the, or 2D, you can see that this is the, all the possible wave number provided by the, uh, how to say, provided by the uh, air, okay, in, in free space. Okay, all the uh, propagation mode, all the propagation mode in the uh, free space. Okay, this is a uh, yellow region. This is surface plasma. You can say no, no interaction. Here, because this surface plasma can be shifted, okay, because due to this uh, uh, flow field mode, okay, uh, and provided by the flow field mode, they can shift, okay. So you can see the many, many interaction. So they can excite, okay. You can see it, they can shift. And, and, and the shift of distance, this distance just, just, just this, just the uh, flow field mode, okay. So this is a, uh, this is a picture. This is excited plasma. This is a picture. They excited. You can see this is a, this is a cross section. You can see they can excited by this uh, pure structure. But I think the thing is not so easy. I think it's not so easy. Why? First thing, I just go to the next page. Why so it's not so easy? Okay, this is a periodic structure. This is a, oh, no, not periodic structure. This is a maybe air metal structure, right? Initially, use plane wave. So they cannot excite it. So we just perturb. Perturb. Okay. Perturb this surface. Max is periodic. Okay, max is periodic. Then it can kind of excite it. But when you perturb this surface, you also affect you also affect the dispersion relation or original surface plasma. Originally we know that surface plasma case is equal to omega over C then square root in so m uh, over in so d over in so m plus in so d. But this is for the flat surface. If you perturb, you lose, you lose the original dispersion relation. Okay, this is an important thing. Now you perturb. Another thing, when you perturb, they has uh, some plasmonic standing wave. We call it plasmonic standing wave concept. This is, I, I did some work about this plasmonic standing wave. Before I talk about the plasmonic standing wave, we can, we can remember some propagating mode. They have some standing wave for propagating mode for photonic crystal. Right, standing wave for photonic crystal. I think uh, you, I hope you can remember the standing wave concept, right? I said, you fall free space, you fall free space, the dispersion has two curves, one is omega equal to ck, another is omega equal to minus to ck, right? Then I do some virtual theory boundary condition, and the virtual theory boundary condition, at this point, is standing way, is standing way. Similar to that, right, this M zone one, M zone two, M zone one, M zone two, many many. If M zone one equal to M zone two, at this point, because standing wave they degenerate, but 
a change of color. If inson one is not equal to inson two due to couple mode theory, right? They split a band gap. Okay. <coughs> this is a physical origin band gap of photonic crystal. This band gap is due to the interference between propagating mode, okay, propagating wave. This is the physical origin of the photonic crystal. Here, what's the meaning of plasmonic standing wave? Plasmonic also has standing wave, okay. You, you can understand this way. Okay, we well, know this is plasmonic right, way here. Certainly, also something like this. I assume that they have infinite plane, it's flat. Okay, I just use a virtual periodic boundary condition. Okay, here. At this point, they call the plasmonic standing wave. Okay. But this standing wave is surface wave. Okay, it's interference between two surface waves. One is propagation from left to right, another is, is propagation from right to left. But the two kind of wave a surface plasma wave, not a propagating wave. When the interference, they form a standing wave. Okay. This is just interference of surface waves. Okay, this is interference in surface. Okay, this degenerate, but when I introduce, I use different color. Why introduce this? Okay. I slightly perturb this flat surface by I slightly perturb the flat surface. Okay. It has a band gap. This is band gap. We call this a plus monic band gap. It's quite similar. It's similar to photonic crystal, but the physical origin is quite different. Okay, it's quite different. This is called a plus monic band gap. So, so what's the physical origin of photonic crystal band gap? It's a constructively and destructive interference or propagating mode. Okay, propagating wave. So here, what's the physical origin of plasmonic band gap? Just interference, just is constructively destructive interface or surface wave. Okay, this is a surface plasma wave, it's interference. Okay. They open up a band gap. Okay. So this is a physical origin of a plasmonic band gap. Okay. So when I go to this picture. You can see this is a distortion diagram. So originally they have no band gap, but here you can see it's really a band gap. You can see they have lower frequency, the higher frequency, there is a band gap. Typically in some symmetric structure, the band gap is very small. It's not easy to split compared to a photonic crystal. So why why? So so how about this eigen mode? What's what's the feature of the eigen mode? This will give us sinew modulated boundary, you can see. Due to a surface modulation, they have two surface plasma standing wave solution. The standing wave solution will split, okay, because it modulated due to carbon mode theory. Okay. So they have different field distribution and charge distribution. Okay. You can see as they have lower band, okay, omega minus and lower band, this positive negative, this is a Positive negative, positive negative, this is a surface charge, this is a, a, a surface charge distribution, it's polarizing charge. You can see the field 
It's something like this. This field is quite similar to a flat surface. It's quite similar to flat surface. You can see. Similar to, if I see the flat surface along here, you can see everything is same. It's similar. I go go back, go back. You can see. This is flat surface, right? This flat surface, okay. So this is a modulated. This is a modulated sinus surface. You can see this is a signal. But at higher frequency, you can see the surface the chart is changing quite differently. So this field line, you can see, is quite different. Okay. So they have distortion on this field line. Okay. They have large distortion. Okay. So they, they have a higher frequency. Okay. And between the two frequencies, they have small band gap. It means the, uh, the surface plasma cannot propagate. Okay. Surface plasma cannot propagate. They call uh, okay. They also call this band age. The surface plasma band age is surface plasma band gap. Okay. It has a, a, a lot of application. One application, someone use this band age to the laser. Okay? Remember the band age of a photonic crystal. Guru will also equal to zero, right? Guru will also equal to zero. So, so they have resonance. So you can do the leading, but the surface plasma band age they also can do the leading because they have a very strong field enhancement. Okay, they also can do the leading called plasmonic band edge leading. Okay, this is quite different from the photonic band edge leading. Okay, this is a very hot topic. Okay. Even maybe last year I published in physical review letter of physical review B. I can't remember. I remember this work. Okay, you can see. So you, this is a uh, uh, for sinus. Uh, uh, Sinew modulation is boundary, okay? So I I started, okay? I and my colleague, maybe Xuan Hua, we started this uh, uh, plasmonic band in a square, okay? This square grating, okay? This is square grating, okay? We started this, okay? We also found that uh, between the two band edge, you can see, it has a, you can see it's stuck, right? So this, it means that they cancel, they disconstruct, it destructive interference, the field become weaker. Okay. Okay. At this situation, the band gap is very small. There's no band gap. But at, at this point, you can see the field's intensity is weak because it uh, uh, destructive interference. Okay. And the band edge is strong, but another thing you can see the distribution of field is quite different. At the lower lower band edge, the diffusion along here, right? Is 12. Okay. But at a higher frequency, it's a peak, more stronger. Okay. So this is quite similar to photonic crystal. Photonic crystal, we said, oh, in a lower frequency, the EM field will concentrate in dielectric band, right? A due to verification principle. And the higher frequency, we focus on the air band, air region. So here, okay, in a lower frequency, I focus on the troll. In a higher frequency, I focus on the uh, peak. Okay, so also similar, quite different. So the very similar phenomenon. But the physical origin is different because this interference or surface wave, surface plasma wave, are not, not an interference or the propagating wave. Okay. So this is called a plasmonic band gap and band age. This is a very new topic. But still a, a lot of people use this topic to do the optoelectronics. We use we use this grating to the solar cell in concert of absorption of solar cell. One, uh, at that time, uh, my colleague uh, Xuan Hua to, to, to measure the reflection spectrum, they find some peak. They find some peak. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's the physical origin of the peak. Then I do some simulation, find, find this phenomenon in the plasmonic band age. Band gap. Are you playing with this thing? Okay. This is a plasmonic band gap in the band age. Okay. This is a, a little bit difficult. Okay. A little bit difficult. This is uh, this is cer the third method, right? For grading coupling, okay. Finally, I use surface better. <laughs> the, the third method is subscatter. This also have uh, less wave concept. What is the difference between propagating wave and surface wave? Oh, surface plasmonic wave. 
Surface plus monic wave is uh, is along the propagating direction for say this complex wave because metal is lost. That means they propagate but they decay mm. along this direction. Along vertical direction they are they are along air they decay, along metal also decay. Mm. So they are surface wave, they are confined, they are surface. Mm. Okay? And our propagating wave the first thing is their propagation, there's no decay and no confine along the vertical. Mm. This is called propagating wave. So mm. it's quite a difference. Mm. This is a subscatter. A subscatter, I think, I, I know if a very small nano particle, when D is smaller than the lambda, okay, they can be seen, uh, they can be approximate to this person dipole. Okay, they can be regarded as person dipole. So this is the reason, I don't mean, know, Hersing dipole, when they are very close to the surface, they can excite surface plasma. Okay, but Hersing dipole, because they have to have a distant wave. For very, very small scatter, when you use plane wave to excite this very small scatter, they behave like a Hersing dipole. Okay, so they can excite the surface plasma. I go back, you can see, okay, there's many, many scatter, okay, and they have a small piece, small, maybe one, one strip, okay, small tip, and then this is a fiber tip, okay, very, very small. When the light inside this small region, this small region will produce evanescent wave, okay, they produce evanescent wave around this small scatter, that they get inside the surface plasma, because the evanescent wave provide the very broad band uh, spatial spec, uh, very broad band uh, 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 spectral in K, K the band, okay? So they can inside the surface plasma. So this, this is a small scatter, it's a behave like a crescent dive, behave like a crescent dive. So they can inside the surface plasma, okay? This is uh, another way. They have a broad band angular spectral for this evidence away from a substate or tips, okay? This is very easy. I use uh, uh, fiber, I use uh, fiber tip, I use uh, <coughs> atomic force, microscopy, I use very small tip, they can inside that. So it's, it's really real, I think it's okay. So this is a uh, full method to excite the surface cost. Then, because, okay, this is a subscatter. We talk about the multi layer plus monic system. Initially, we only studied air metal two layer structures. Air metal, okay. Here we study maybe three layer structure. Because I said, when the metal, if a metal is very thin, mm -hmm. this is metal. Maybe it's dielectric. This is dielectric. Okay. Okay. So what happened? As this interface, O, they have surface plasma mm -hmm. mode, right? They have surface plasma mode. Okay. And another interface, it also has surface plasma mode. Yes. If the thickness is very thick, very thick, the two modes are all coupled, right? Because they feel will decay along the metal, mm -hmm. right? But it's very thin. If D is very very thin, the two they call the surface plasma one is surface plasma two. This is the surface plasma one mode. Will couple to surface plasma two mode. Okay. okay. When they couple, according to couple modes, they already split two resonance frequency, right? Initially, the same, right? If an even thick, it's the same, one resonance frequency. If they couple, they become a two resonance frequency. Okay. This is a couple of observed. This is a, the phenomenon is very special. If in microwave regime, if we see the metal is a perfect electrical conductor, no, no such a couple, okay, no such a couple. But in, in optical regime, the metal is penetrable. Okay, the wave can be penetrated into the metal. Okay, but if the metal, if the thickness of the metal is 
very small uh, wavelengths on all skin depths. We call skin depths. If the D is a uh, comparable, no, if comparable to the skin depths, the top interface and the bottom interface will couple. Okay, they call skin depths. What's the meaning of skin depths? Skin depths is just some distance the wave can decay, decay one or one or e. Okay, one or e. They decay. Okay, decay some distance. You, uh, we can assume that the wave decays to zero. Okay. There's some distance a wave from one amplitude one to decay to one or the E X P of one. Okay. They decay to something like this. Okay, they call skin depths. The skin depths typically for silver or or maybe uh, uh metal they has uh, maybe fifty uh, ten, uh fifty nanometer around that. Okay. Small typically smaller than one hundred nanometer. For for silver typically is uh, is uh, about around uh, one hundred nanometer. Okay? So if a thickness is smaller than one hundred nanometer, that means the wave from the top interface and the wave from the bottom interface, they can interfere, right? They can interfere. Because they, they, they cannot decay to zero. Okay? When they interact with each other, they split. Okay, they split. Split two resonance frequencies. This is the basic idea. So this uh, they will have split surface plus monic mode. Okay, they have two split surface plus monic. Mathematically, we can get this uh, dispersion relation. Okay, I just move it quickly because this is easy to derive, not difficult. First, we just assume because only TM mode can inside the surface plasma because it, it, for TM mode it has surface charge. Okay, because n dot d is not equal to zero. Okay, so they have surface charge for TM mode. Okay, so we can assume h y e x and e z. Uh, uh, one the z larger than a. Let's see, the z is larger than a. This is a region. You can see the beta is a uh, is a tangential wave number. Okay, it's same all the region. This is decay along z direction. So this is decay along z direction. It's minus k three z. So it decay along z direction. Okay. So this is the. When the z is minus a, okay, it's also a dielectric of air region. I mean, it's a region two in here. I I can assume that the wave something like this along x direction, it has a propagation along z direction. They decay. Here you can see this is a k two z. This is a minus k three z because the, the uh, along the top region they decay along z direction. They this decay along the minus z direction, so they change the sign. Okay. I mean, this region is decay along z direction. This is decay along minus z direction. Okay. So this should be k two z because z is minus, so make this smaller. Okay. If if you move minus k two z, it become exponential increase. Okay. So this is the proper way to assume that. Oh, between that, you just as they have two term. Okay. Add them together. Then I use boundary condition. Tangential H field, H Y is continuous, tangential E field is continuous. Okay. So for any problem, analytical method, first thing is just as sum. You just assume the field form in different region. Okay? For E and H field. Another, they have some unknown, use a boundary condition. Tangential E and tangential H. So you can solve. Okay, this is oh, for all the energy solution they have same way. The same way. Like I saw them, they can solve this dispersion relation. When the m zone 2 equal to m zone 3, okay, they get this dispersion relation. Okay, this dispersion relation you know, cannot be solved. You, you should solve use the MATLAB code because this is a hy hyperlinear equation. You can solve it. Okay. Well, when you solve this, Okay, this is the author. This is a reference book by the mayor. Okay, M I R E R. He saw this. You can see that it's interesting. Okay, he saw that there has odd mode and even mode. Okay, uh, originally this the in the middle one is original dispersion relation. Okay, when the metal core 
Here has 100 nanometer you can see they overlap each other at the middle region but there's a 50 nanometer I think the thinner right they can couple they split audible and even more okay, it's called audible and even more this this is solved by the loss of the student or is not accurate not accurate you can you can solve have two ways. One way you can find the pulse or generalized reflection coefficient. I remember I shared my code to you to, to calculate the general generalized reflection coefficient from Adelia. This reflection coefficient, the pole is reflection coefficient. This uh, can be solved, can get this dispersion. Okay. So let us see what's the symmetry mode, what's the asymmetry mode. Okay, you can see this is symmetry mode. Okay, this is symmetry mode. Called symmetry mode. This is asymmetry mode. We have two kinds of symmetry and asymmetry. I mean, this symmetry uh, with uh, uh, you can see this symmetry. It is symmetry axis. The symmetry mode profile is asymmetry mode. It's two kinds of mode. That this curve is solved by myself. I, I saw you find the difference method. They also solve by, by the find the difference method because I also share this code to. I remember I, I, I give the code to Xin Gang, right? To solve this code, how to solve this? How to solve this uh, multi-layer problem? Arbitrary multi-layer can solve the FD method. Where is the? It's metal. I mean dielectric. Dielectric. Okay, it's something like this. Then you can mesh. It's a one D program in mesh. All the grid point, okay. As a boundary, you can use PEC to truncate that. Why? Why can use PEC? Because we will decay, right? We will decay to zero, right? So you can use PEC, no problem. Okay. So for fun, the surface plasma mode is no problem, okay? Because the wave decay to zero, can use PEC, okay? So uh, around this point, the satisfy governing equation. The gravity equation is a HZ plus K, this original form, right? But it's not a, this is a, a wave equation, right? The wave equation. But the, the K, sorry, the K square is a Z direction, I assume it's Z. So this is the Gaussian equation. And this is uh, okay. This is a three D, right? If, because only has the H Z component for T M wave. So here we know that this is X. Okay, we assume this X. This is Z. So this become HZ right. If I assume that Y to zero, no problem Plus right. I change to this Okay, because I will copy the X only right? I just use that last thing of return So how about this? The very important how this? K x square, right? Right, k x square. Minus, right? Because it's a j k x. Minus. Because I j k x square and plus d z square h z plus k square z h z equal to zero. So finally, we can get this eigen equation. This eigen equation has something like this: d squared plus k squared z h z equal to k x squared h z. So this is a, we want to get tangential wave number. This is the operator. This is t. X lambda x something like this. So you can get this uh, Gaussian equation. Okay. So.
Now this is an eigen equation. This is eigen equation. So you can get this, but not different. I have solved this, you can solve this eigen, eigen values. Right? This is my code. I saw this perfect by myself. So I spent a lot of time to prepare this lecture because I, I must write code. Okay. I must write code. This is my code. Okay. I use one D, F D equation. You can see here, I use the I started the insulator, silver insulator. Okay, this is glass, silver glass. I, I adopt the Joe Lawrence model. It's a real model. So you can get a two set of one dispersion relation. One is omega real key, right? The real number of beta. Another is omega with a in many parts of beta, because beta is complex, right? Beta is complex because I consider a lossy, I consider lossy when many of the beta become complex. Okay, you can see first thing, they split the two curve. Okay, if I give a real beta, you can see similar to even mode is lower, in lower mode, right? Uh, outer mode is higher because I fix the real part of beta. It's a lower resonance frequency. It's a higher resonance frequency, and uh, this this is a uh, uh, unperturbed one, the original. But uh, we see this this is very very important. This is the omega with a many part of a many part of the uh, beta. Okay, you can see which one decay which one decays lower, which can more decays lower. Green one, right? This is a many part of beta. You give omega, right? Green one. That means green one has a lower attenuation constant. Okay, they call it propagation constant, they call it attenuation constant, because this is a complex dispersion relation. You should draw two kind of picture. One is omega with the real part of beta, one is omega with the inner part of beta. This is a decay. Okay, if the inner of beta is smaller, it decays lower. So green one, that means the old mode, okay? The so old mode decays lower, decays lower. So all the mode, we call this all the mode is long range surface plasma mode. Okay, because they can propagate long range. Okay. And the red one we call the short range surface plasma mode because it decays fast. Because it decays fast. Okay. This is a picture. Okay. Here's a 1D FD can solve this. And I use my code again, my final difference code again. So this, okay, this is also interesting. You can see, this is even mode. For even mode, I from the 50 nanometer to increase 60 nanometer. I just increase the thickness, right? See what happened. I increase the thickness from 50 to 60. How about, how about this change? You can see, I increase the thickness. Oh, I, I from here, I decrease the thickness, let me get that. I from 60 nanometer decrease to 50 nanometer was a change. Okay. In, in luck, right? You can see this is a, I give the omega, this is a matter beta, okay? This is the solid curve that I, I'm, at first I meet a solid curve that I meet the dash curve, okay? Dash curve is 50 nanometer. So I, when I shrink the thickness of the silver layer, I increase the in many part of beta, I increase the attenuation coefficient. That means when I shrink the thickness, the wave propagation distance becomes shorter. Not good, right? So the even mode is not our design mode. But you see this all the mode is quite different. I from the I should when I shrink the thickness, you can see this the decrease the decrease the inner part of beta. That means when the thickness becomes thinner and thinner, the thickness becomes thinner and thinner, they can propagate longer and longer. So this is quite interesting. They have kind of reverse. Okay. So you have this is dash line. Oh, this is dash line. Not curly. This is solid line. Okay. So this is a very interesting thing. Okay. So physically, the even more when you decrease the metal film thickness, the even mode will confine, confine to this metal layer, increase the confine. But the older mode, they do not confine the metal layer, but, but, but become a propagation wave. Okay. I mean, okay. 
from here to here, this is even low. Okay. When you shrink the thickness, this field confinement becomes stronger and stronger. It's even low. So they, they, they did a propagation very short distance. But all the more, they are not confined in the metal layer, but go, go something above the dielectric layer. Okay. So they have propagation longer distance. So you have from your solar, you, you can see many, many features. Okay, many, many features. How to change this data or how to understand it's a long range and short range uh, surface of plasma node. Just use 1D uh, FD method. We can say this. It's a magic. They have the reverse, you can see. This is a so this is a solid this is a, a solid line that mesh a dash line. This is a dash line that mesh a solid line. So it's a quite different situation. You can see this picture. It has a many information. I spent, lot, I spent some time to draw this kind of a figure. <laughs> okay. And the mesh, mesh density is very crucial for this. 0 0.5 nanometer. Get an accurate now. Or else cannot. Because why? Because around here, okay, the key, sorry, why this FD method should use very thin mesh? Because around here, the rear part key is very large. So it decay very fast along the vertical direction. So you use you should use a very, very thin mesh to capture this field. To capture this field. It's a very thin mesh. Otherwise you cannot get it right or not. Okay. This is all the story for the surface processing. We have so a five minute break. <laughs> now I talk about the, the local bus. This is quite different uh, quite different field. So surface plasma, with, now we talk about local plasma. Typically, local plasma is for the nanoparticle. Okay. For nanoparticle, I go to the Circle, then go to another half circle, 
They push it down. Okay. That means there's a bulk electron within this nanoparticle. It's a free electron. A free electron. When you add E field, they push them up, push them down because it's oscillatory. They change the polarization. Okay. The polarity oscillatory field. Okay. So they push them up, push them down. It's something like this. Okay. When they push it up, they will return back. Right? They will return back because they have a we call it a restoring force. Because they have a positive ion, right? When you push an electron here, it has ion. Also within this nanoparticle, they will push them down. Except for this, something like this. Like a, so it's very similar like a harmonic oscillator, like spring ball, like spring ball. Very similar spring ball model, the oscillation top and down, top and down. So this is uh, important. There has two kind of laws. One loss is the omega loss because it's a loss in material. Okay, that pro, pro, it can produce the heat. Another is the scary loss or releasable loss. It means the wave can be scattered. It is scattered wave from far field. Okay, but the incident wave to to uh, illuminate this narrow particle, the oscillatory, then they emit scattered wave out. They also uh, some uh, wave are absorbed and become a heat. Okay. Because they have lossy, okay. So into the wave, then they have scatter wave, and some of the wave are absorbed by this lossy material. Okay. So this is a physical picture everyone should understand. You can see the the maybe the, the, no, the yellow the yellow part, this is a bulk electron, you can see. They move if no field, this is within the sphere. You add an E field, they put them up. A little bit, right? And you change the polarization because it's the EM field, right? The polarization will change up and down, right? They push them down, okay? They push them up, push them down, okay? So you have to, they will penetrate all the, the field should be penetrated all of the field. If a sphere is very large, if a sphere is very large, it cannot penetrate. You cannot grasp all the electron, okay? So you have no, no this physical picture. You can see. In the figure, is all the electron here, okay? They push them up, push them down. This is a plasmon effect. In very large sphere, no plasmon effect. Because it cannot penetrate. Okay. So this is a, a physical picture. So this move inside is similar to dipole. While the sphere is very small. I think if a sphere is large, the EM cannot penetrate all the sphere. They cannot grasp all the electrons. No, it's a, we, typically we do not call this plasmonic effect. Okay. If this is a so if it's small, typically it's 40 or 60 nanometer. I think the many for the 40, 60 or 20 nanometer. Okay. When they excite the, the resonance, they have supported the dipole mode. Okay, the positive negative and the positive charge or something like this. This is dipole mode. Okay. So excite them to a dipole mode. Uh, no, I say a sphere, you know, when, for sphere they have many many different modes, like a dipole, cortical, octopole, you know. Right, from lower to higher, okay. Mm -hmm. Here, if a sphere, if a, if a sphere or some narrow particle is sufficiently small, mm -hmm. the, the EM can penetrate the fundamental mode or lowest mode is similar to dipole, mm -hmm. okay. It's similar to dipole, Hersing dipole, okay. This is a polarization charge, okay. You have a positive negative, there has something causing dipole, okay. Mm -hmm. This is e, e field, this is E field. This is a propagation direction, this is E field direction. Mm -hmm. So you can see they may be polarized. Okay, the polarity chart. Okay, so this is a diamond. Okay, now I have how to solve how to solve this problem. This is a one way. One way to solve this problem is to uh, use uh, solve the Laplace problem. Okay, Laplace problem. I need to sit down to derive something. This is a hard one. How to solve this problem? How to find this resonance condition? Okay, this is a difficult. Mm -hmm. Not not easy to understand. Very difficult. Because uh, I draw this picture. This E field is key. Mm -hmm. The sphere has to be smaller than the wavelength of the light. Right, much smaller. Much smaller. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically, we will consider the visible light regime because it's plasma. The the D, 
it typically is a plus, for plus more effect of 10 nanometer. Because too small is kind of quantum effect, we just not consider mm. nanometer. Right. And the small, maybe 100. Cannot be too large. Much smaller than the weight. The kind of plus more effect. Local plus more effect. We call local plus. How to solve this problem? How solve this problem? As I said, when D is much smaller than the wavelengths, which regime? Okay, when I said we have three regime. When the size of object is much smaller than wavelengths, we have an electrostatic or call it electrostatic regime. If the size is comparable to wavelengths, we have a wave physics. Right? Mm -hmm. If the size is much Larger than the wavelengths, we have a ray physics. Okay. So it's very important. You must know the size. This size is size very small. Okay. So it's an electrostatic physics or called electrostatic physics. Okay. Here we call call electrostatic physics. This approximation is not rigorous. Quasi electrostatic. Call it electrostatic. Call electrostatic physics. Here is to satisfy the Laplace equation. This is condition. It should be set by Laplace equation. The E equals to greater than phi. It's not Laplace equation. Why? So for sphere, for sphere, according to separation of rival, separation of rival of phi can be expanded with a special function. This is a, this is a function, okay. This is for special, this is a, by the separation of rival. I already know for the, if the for the Cartesian space, right, Cartesian space, right, you 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 always assume that it has a says it has some sine or cosine right e x t something right uh, but for the sine or cosine or e x t or something like this right but for sphere they tell you this this we call the gender the gender right right. Let me see that this spelling is wrong, not L E G E N G E N D R E. Okay, right. So gender polynomial. Okay. Because of the phi here, the phi, because this this is spirit coordinate, the R we have R theta phi, R theta phi, the phi direction because it's adding mu so symmetry. So it's no and the mutual symmetry is no dependent. For the natural static form. Okay. For dynamic, it has some different form. Okay, this is a uh, form. Okay. First, how to determine, determine the BL, oh sorry. From this equation, assume Phi in and phi out. I mean the potential within the sphere, potential out of the sphere. I just assume. So in the sphere, very simple. It should be something like this. R A. R O N. P L cosine C. <laughs> why? Why no B term? Why no B term? Why R equal to zero? They go to infinity, mm -hmm. right? So double in this. Potential should be finite. Find out. Okay. The B R R L plus C R. I just C R R minus L plus one. Plus one. Just copy here. Process. First thing. 
how to determine the BL? Because we know phi out equal to minus E0z, right? Equal to minus E L R cosine C. One R goes to infinity. One R goes to infinity. Right? Because th this means that this is a, a physical picture is a sphere. They have E zero. They have Imsu omega. This Imsu M. Okay. Something like this. This is Z. Okay, I use Imsu T. This is a physical picture. This E zero is applied field. Okay, applied field. This is a, 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 a metal sphere. When you apply field, the metal sphere will polarize, right? It will polarize. Then they will produce some E field, some potential. And infinite, and infinite, this potential will go to zero, okay? Because it decay, the electrostatic, the field will decay. Right? So at R goes to zero, the final out is only determined by the E zero, okay? So it's E zero or Z. Is E zero or Z because greater than phi minus equals to E zero. Okay, so E zero or Z, right? Because it's along Z direction. It's along Z direction. Okay. This is a real. To find out something like this because it's a gradient phi out equal to E zero E Z. Okay, positive. Okay. This is a. Uh, due to this condition, you can get, okay, the B1 equal to B0. Right, because at the C, B1 equal to 0, and the BL equal to 0, but L equal to 1. Okay, this is for B. You can see for R goes to infinity, this term equals to zero, that one complete. But uh, uh, L only can equal to one because of this condition. Okay. So it's this this B1 equal to E zero, the R cosine theta, this is cosine theta. So it's this is so P I remember P1 cosine theta equal to cosine theta. So this how to determine B1. And how to determine the AL and the CL just due to a boundary condition. So I said, everyone said, assume, assume, uh, assume the field form and use boundary condition. Everyone said. Okay, so this is uh, it's R equal to A. This is phi uh, out equal to R to theta, I equal to A. The E theta is continuous. This E theta is continuous. This for E theta is continuous. This is for dr is continuous. This is for d field is continuous. Partial E, partial R, my R equal to A, and the M zone zero, M zone D. This is M D, partial out, partial R, R equal to A. DR is continuous. Okay. Your tangential uh, E field is continuous, a uh, vector uh, electro flux, a uh, normal uh, electro flux is continuous. So you can finally you can get the uh, final resolution. So I draw this phi out. It has physical meaning. The first term is incident field, right? It's incident. Another term is very important. Another term. This term is similar to scatter field. Okay. Scatter field. So here. 
I can simplify this equation. The second term can simplify something P. I use polarization field. This is can be simplified. Something like this. The P here is is four pi epsilon zero epsilon d a three. Okay, then plus epsilon minus epsilon m epsilon d. Then plus epsilon plus two epsilon d or epsilon zero. D. Here, P just epsilon zero epsilon m alpha d zero. So here, the, the alpha is the polarization bit polarizability. Finish with polarizability. Let me replay this. Okay. This is the final solution. Okay. This is the final solution. The first thing is instant field, and now it's scatter field. So I, I, I understand scatter field as the first thing dipole, similar to the first thing dipole, or similar to the ideal dipole. Okay. I use the polarization dot R or something term. You can easily find get a polarization. Everyone knows the polarization can be written as the uh, uh, polarizability alpha epsilon zero and the epsilon d. Okay, this is the uh, form. So from this form. When the scatter field become very large, what's the condition for scatter field become very large? Okay, the denominator goes to zero. Right. When the denominator m so plus two m so d go to zero, the scatter field become very large. This is the resonance condition. It's very important. M so metal, I call it m so omega plus two m so d equal to zero. This is a, okay, this is a resonance condition for local plasma. This is a resonance condition for local plasma. This is the resonance condition for local cluster. So this is quite different from surface plasma. Surface plasma is epsilon omega plus epsilon d equals to zero. Here is epsilon omega plus two epsilon d equals to zero. They have two here. Okay. Okay. This, this is just uh, you can solve this uh, Laplace equation. They can solve this basic idea. So imagine that if this sphere. It's dielectric, very, very small dielectric. This resonance condition cannot be set in right? This it cannot be set in right? Except the epsilon omega is negative, right? Because epsilon d is positive, right? They can set it in Okay. So this mode, this mode is, uh, as I said, is dipole mode, this first thing. This dipole mode only exists for this plasmonic sphere. For this kind of mode, because this resonance condition can be satisfied. Okay, can be satisfied. This is the resonance condition. This is the resonance condition. This is dipole mode, so I just show this picture. The mass is a little bit complicated. You can, you can skip the mass if you, if you cannot understand. I spent many many years. I, I can know this, you know, know this spherical form, spherical harmonic. Know this, uh, <laughs> not easy. This will and take a long time to understand the function. It's it's not easy. But everyone should know that this incident wave is a scatter wave. When epsilon plus two epsilon m equal to zero, this scatter wave become very very large. It cannot be go to infinity because they have loss. They have loss. So this is the resonance condition. The real part of it, epsilon omega. The real part of metal equal to Minus two of epsilon m, m is dielectric. Okay, so this is dipole mode. You can see this work is done by my colleague. They use uh, some uh, full wave simulation to get this dipole mode. Very nice. It's nano sphere. It's a near field distribution and a resonance. It's a gold with a diameter of uh, fifteen 
15 nanometer. You can see this is a uh, uh, K direction, this is E. Oh, sorry, this is E direction. Sorry. This is E. It's a polarized along this direction. You can see it's very strong. Okay. It's very similar to a dipole mode. So this is a dipole mode. Then I go to a little bit. Okay. I mean, this is a very important thing for the a scaring pattern for metallic sphere for or for sphere from small to large. From small to large. This is a very important theory from sphere. So sphere is a, you know, I think it's a, maybe it's the oldest quest program that people study in natural dynamics for sphere. Right? Like like many other research studies, they have rich physics. Sphere's scattering. For sphere scaling, if the diameter is much smaller than the wavelength, this force situation very small. So this is a near field. Okay, this E. So something like this. Okay. Just I draw. Okay. It's near field. For far field. This is far field scaling pattern. Okay, this is K direction. I remember this picture. I, I talk about this the, the, in my lecture. Okay. It's a near field because the, this is an E field that polarized along this direction. So they have a very very strong near field enhancement along this direction. But uh, and the far field is scattered along a K direction. But the, but, but the field intensity is much weaker because they multiply some 10,000 times. I talk about this uh, in the maybe the electromagnetic cause for near field and far field physics for Hersen dipole. Okay, so this very very small sphere is uh, similar to Hersen dipole. Even though not a sphere, if a particle is very small, it's similar to Hersen dipole. It's a dipole dipole mode. They have some kind of pattern. This scattering we call really scattering. It's very important. This, this is a formed by really. This is called this uh, reading scattering. Divide the reading scattering. This reading scattering can be explained that why sky is, sky is blue. Why sky is blue due to reading scattering. Okay, why sky is blue? Because in the sky, there's many, many small particles, you know, I mean dust, I mean very, very small particle. These small particles scatter, scatter the visible light. Right? It's scattered from red to, to blue. But the, the most stronger scattering intensity was achieved by blue light. Okay. This scatter is very, very small compared to wavelengths, so it's really scattering. This scatter light, blue light, very strongly compared to other so this is a reason you see the blue star. This is really scary. This is an important application that people maybe this really understand the the, the physical phenomenon first. Okay. Understand the physical phenomenon first. Okay. Another why the image? Okay. It's comparable to wavelengths. They call it mean scattering. The mean scattering shows a very interesting picture for far field. It's far field. I draw far field directly. This far field, this sphere. Okay, this far field is key direction. Far field. And the forward scattering is very strong. Okay, but as the other scattering is weaker, it shows some relation pattern, something like this. Maybe I not show show the I I just ignore the sphere. This is relation pattern. 
something like this. Okay. This is a scattering pen far field. This is only for scatter field. Okay. Only for scatter field. This is for this can be explain the physical phenomenon. Why the cloud is white? Why the cloud is white? Because in the cloud, this nanoparticle within the cloud, the size is comparable. It's comparable to wavelengths. This scatter all the this scatter all the wavelengths, uh, the light with all the visible light regime equal. Okay, it scan every equally. So add them together, it shows a white color. Okay. For really scattering, they scan the blue, blue light strongly. Okay. So this reason why the cloud is white. Okay, so it due for me scattering. If you increase the diameter of your, your particle larger and larger, the much larger than the lambda, what happened? Oh, comes up something like this. Forward scattering very large. And yet oscillator. Very oscillator. Other direction. This is uh, also called mid scattering, but it's very large. So this is a uh, basic uh, physics. So I show this picture. You can see. It's a really scattering, similar to dipole pattern. Okay, it's a mean scattering, smaller. The forward, larger, backward, smaller. It's a for large particle, you can say forward is very strong. Okay, so the size from small to large. This is a basic picture for, uh, for the uh, uh, scattering head for scale. For the plasmodic effect, we only for People just interest, so the regime is really scattered because sphere size is very small. It's dipole pattern. Okay, it's really scattered. This is a near field and far field distribution for the really scattering for the metallic nanoparticle. Same for the it's the same for the earth and okay. But uh, initially, I I I get this resonance condition Imsnon uh, metal plus two. Imsnon dielectric equals to zero with the Laplace equation. Because I said because the size is much smaller than wavelengths, I use a call electrostatic approximation. I saw a Laplace equation, I get a resonance condition. But it's not rigorous. A rigorous way is solve this with a me theory, okay, with a me theory or with electrodynamic theory. Okay. This is a, uh, I think it's a rigorous thing to solve that. This part is uh, quite difficult. It's quite difficult. So, uh, it's fully mathematical. It's quite difficult. So uh, I like to, to, to talk about this uh, simple. Okay, I now derive this in detail. Okay, you can very 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 mathematical but for me here. Okay. I will solve the electromagnetic wave with the sphere. Okay, with the sphere is E M wave. This this is the electrostatic steady wave, so I just draw this pattern. This is E electrostatic. Okay, this E M wave. For E M so this sphere, typically we also can be decomposed with T M R and T E R. Waves. Remember, for 2D purple, we can split the TM wave and TE wave. But for sophia, we also can do that. When, what's meaning of TMR? I mean, the E R along here, the H is the tangential. Okay. H is something like this. Okay, they call it a TMR. The edge is in the, in the, in the transverse plane, but uh, the E is along the R direction. It's along the R direction. Okay. This is for sphere. Okay. Another for TER. The TER is edge along the R direction, and the E is at its transverse plane. So TMR, TER. Okay. We call it TMR, TER. This is a way to do that. So we introduce called a 
T by potential. T by potential. H T M equals to delta cross R pi E. The pi E is a D by potential for T M wave. So T E wave I also can introduce another potential pi M. This, this is D by potential similar to the uh, vector potential okay, in the uh, uh, Cartesian space. We introduce vector potential. Okay. So I, I slightly to, to, to measure about the vector potential, maybe it's better. Because we know that delta dot D equals to zero, right? So we assume that B equals to delta cross A. Right. You'll learn this. Right. If I know this, the E equal to delta cross A of T that's greater than phi. This A called vector potential, phi called scalar potential, right? We know this, we can know the E field. Right. The something like this to so solve the Maxwell equation. This is a for uh, uh, Cartesian space. For what's the fear? Similar we also have some uh, potential for T and T M. This satisfies the Gaffney equation. Scalar. Why I, I this is satisfy this scalar equation. Pi equals to zero, pi m equals to yeah. It satisfies scalar equation. You can see that this, this i here and i here. This is a, this is a, because this is sphere, this is spherical coordinate. So this is very special in all the uh, Cartesian space. So finally, h equal to delta cross r pi e plus i omega mu delta delta cross r pi m. It's similar to the uh, duality principle. Okay, so this minus i omega mu is delta delta cross r pi. Okay. In other words, if I know the pi e and the pi m, I can know the h and e. This is the reason we introduce called a vector uh, called a d by potential. Okay, why the d by potential satisfies the scalar scalar wave equation, okay, because finally we should get a vector, okay, we use this two way to get this, okay, use a two way to get this, okay. This is uh, the first <coughs> thing that, then I can take you to take the slide, I move slide faster, because it's too very, com com very complicated, okay. not easy. <laughs> okay. I think they have three steps. Okay, first, we know the general solution for d by potential in the spherical coordinate. It can split in three parts. One is called a spherical basic or spherical Kuiper function. Another is an associated Lagrangian polynomial. Uh, that is a, is an EXP or cosine harmonic form for the phi direction. It has three terms. This is for the d by potential with a spherical harmonic function. For this d by potential. That has a physical meaning here. The G is similar to a standing wave. Okay. The H1 is, is outgoing wave, H2 is incoming wave. H1 plus H2 is a G standing wave. The P and M is a, is a Lagrangian polynomial or, or, or associated Lagrangian polynomial. The EIM phi is a, is a harmonics because it's a, it's a purely bounded condition along the phi direction. Purely bounded on the phi direction. Okay. So, with this, uh, because I said the d by potential satisfy the scalar, you can see, it satisfy the scalar wave equation, so that I can expand, expand this pi e and pi m with a spherical wave, right? It's a, it's a spherical, it's a, a base error fun a spherical base error Hankel function with a Lagrangian function with the harmonic, right? It's scalar, so easier. With the scalar form, I can express the tangential E and tangential H with a vector form, okay, by this equation. I said, if I know, know the pi E and pi M, I can know the E and the H, okay. This is the reason I, why I introduced this d by potential, okay. So I can get this tangential. Then, I use tangential boundary condition, okay. I mean tangential E S and H are continuous at this interface. So this is a, this is a case. First, we consider case consider incoming standing wave as a, okay. We consider that we have incoming standing wave. I means we consider as a spherical basic function incident to this sphere. 
Some wave will reflect it or scatter, right? There's an inside wave, a scatter wave, then has a propagating, then has a transmission wave within this circle. This is a problem we can't say that. Okay. This is by the Professor Winchell's book. Okay. This is a boundary condition tangential for, for TM wave. It's tangential, it's tangential uh, H field is continuous, it's tangential E field is continuous. You solve them, you can get this reflection and transmission coefficient. Okay, this is for TE wave, this is for TE wave. So what's the key I? What's the key here? This is the important thing, okay? This is the math, no problem. But what's the physical idea? From this picture, the incident wave is a spherical incoming standing wave. I mean the incident wave is a JN here. Similar to JN, it's a standing wave. Okay, it's the incident wave. Then it has a reflective wave. The connection between the incident wave and the reflective wave is the reflection coefficient. It's a very simple reflection coefficient, it might be there. It's also the reflection coefficient, it's a spirit coordinate, okay? This is reflection coefficient. Okay. This is reflection coefficient. The pole, okay, the pole of reflection coefficient, what's the meaning of that? It's eigen solution, right? I talked about many times. Because I said reflection wave equals to the reflect reflection coefficient equals to reflection wave or incident wave. If no incident wave, reflection wave is still here, it's eigen solution, the arc goes to infinity. So the denominator goes to zero. This is a resonance condition for TM wave. Right? With a duality principle, we can get this resonance condition for TE wave. And this is very important. This resonance condition is more accurate, okay? You'll find that when this A, I mean it's when the radius is very, very small, this condition just epsilon 1 plus 2 epsilon d equals to 0. That means when the radius is very small, this resonance condition for the TM wave is just a resonance condition derived by the Laplace equation. Okay. But it's more accurate okay. for any radius. Okay. This is for TE wave. So when I talk about this, because the plane wave, okay, you can expand the plane wave as this uh, incoming standing, in incoming standing spherical waves. Okay, this plane wave can be expanded something like this. Okay, you can see this JN. This is a standing, a sphere standing wave. Okay, this is an incoming wave. Okay. That means the plane wave can be represented at the superposition with a TM wave and T wave. Okay, the plane wave. Because the plane wave, you know, is a core, is a Cartesian space. This is, this should be Cartesian. You should convert to Cartesian space to a sphere, spherical space. Okay. So they, they can represent it with a TM and T wave. Every for each each because n equal to one to infinity for each term, you have the reflection coefficient, right? Because you derive above, you derive the reflection coefficient for for different n, right? You give a different. For different n here, you define a different reflection coefficient. And here, the plane wave can be represented by the superposition of TE and TM wave. So each term, then you, you summation all together and get a solution. Okay. This is a basic idea. Basic idea. Okay. But this is quite important. This is quite important. I will mention about it later. Okay. Then I talk about this uh, uh, absorption scattering and extinction cross section. This is, uh, I think everyone should understand this. This is easy to understand. This is easy to understand. What's the absorption cross section or scattering cross section or extinction cross section? For scattering cross section, is total scattering strength or nanostructure at the frequency. Okay, so what's the meaning of that? I just draw this picture. What's the scattering cross section? We know a scattering pattern. Scattering pattern, just for one frequency, you give the this is angle distribution, right? It has scattering strong, it has scattering. You can see this is a scattering pattern, right? Similar to relation pattern. Scattering cross section is not is different. Scattering cross section is a value. Scattering cross section. Okay. Well two E S cross H S star over D S. What's the meaning of that? This is the total scatter power, right? Remember the pointing theorem, 102, real power, E cross H, right? Here, E and H is scatter field. 
This is scattered. That means, this means, oh, the total scattered power, I see, go to a closed surface, closed surface. Okay, maybe this is a particle. I go to the surface. This is S. Okay, this thing here. This is a particle. This is a particle. Okay, I use this, I can get a total scatter power. I mean, there are many, many scatter waves, right? It has scatter waves, a different direction. As many scatter waves. Why do the integral? Okay, dot ds, a total scatter power. This total scatter power, the over, and then a total scattering power over this incident power, a uh, incident power density. This is called a scattering cross section. A uh, incident density is just something y o two e i in cross h i in cross. This is the incident power. Okay. So the, the the dimension just just area similar to area, right? This is a uh, incident angular flux, right? This is an incident angular flux, right? One just equal to e i c squared over m. So. M so is just wave impedance, right? Everyone knows this. This is an incident angular flux, right? This is the total scattering power of instant angular flux. The dimension just ds similar to area. Okay. So this this just give a a, a physical quantity to see the scattering ability of this nano particle. Okay, scattering ability of nano particle with in one with with a spherical frequency. Okay. Okay. So it, because it, it one the particles they scatter different direction has a different pattern, right? Right, yeah. this is called scattering pattern. I integral all the scattering pattern together, get one value. Okay. So I integral, right? This, this is a total scattering power. Okay. All the incident flux, this is called scattering cross-section. Another, maybe you, you're familiar, more familiar with, it's called absorption cross-section. Our assumption cross section is similar as one or two R E part E cross H star over D S level S I E. How about this? Familiar with this? This is a power, it's a real power consumed in an electromagnetic system, right? So this is absorbed power, okay? So this is nanoparticle. It's particle. Okay, this is A. So how about this part? You, you learn this. Pointing theorem. Mm -hmm. Dot E S. Right. It's minus here. Go to sigma E squared dv. You learn this? Right. The energy element and into this and consumed by the loss, right? So this is the real power. It becomes the real power. The E and the H here, the total field, okay? So E equal to E I and C plus E scatter. So total field equal to the incident field plus scatter field. So this incident field plus scatter field, this total field. Yeah. 
to this system. So this is a means and the the, the this a circle, the EM energy and into the surface and convert to the absorption power is sigma e squared. Okay. So this total absorption power of the incident flux just absorption cross section. Okay. Just absorption cross section. Extinction cross section just pull them together. Extinction cross section sigma e equal to sigma a plus sigma s. Okay. So for the physical meaning over here, I just go down. So extinction cross section just intrinsic loss or nanostructure, both absorption loss and scattering loss. Okay. Scattering absorption just see the scattering ability or scattering loss of the system. They give it, they give a total scattering power, okay? And the uh, absorption cross section they give the total absorption power within the nanoparticle right over the isn't the flux. All is the flux just get an area, get get some area. They call it cross section. Okay, this is a dimension problem. So I think cross section just pull them together. So it's an intrinsic loss. The loss has two parts. One is absorption loss, and that is the scattering loss. This extinction is quite similar. Some experimental researcher write one minus r in the periodic structure. What's the meaning of one minus r? R is a reflection, right? So instead of reflection, why is absorption? Why is scattering? You know, so something called vaporized extinction or something like this. Like similar to that. But this is more rigorous. This is for this narrow particle. Okay, not pure. It's not for the periodic structure. So there are two kinds of laws. One is absorption laws. Why is uh, 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 it's absorption loss? Why is uh, 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 scattering loss or leaky loss? Pull them together is extinction cross section. Okay. Pull them together is extinction cross section. This is a quite important uh, concept. Okay. For small narrow particle, the extinction cross section is dominated by absorption cross section. For large particle, the extinction is dominated by a scattering cross section. So. I draw this picture to you. Okay. This is a ball of metallic nanosphere. It's a gold in air. This is an equation. Okay. If I know the reflection coefficient, I can know this is a scattering and intrinsic cross section. I give this equation. Okay. I draw this by my code, my mean series code. Okay. Like, huh? This mean series code. Okay. You can see this picture is very missing. This is a 50 nanometer. This is a 80 nanometer. For the 50 nanometer, absorption, scattering, which one is larger? Absorption. Right? What was the meaning of that? M most energy was, it means absorption, very small sphere, scattering ability is weaker. They have absorbed, they absorbed the EM wave. This is a good absorber. Okay? Okay. But, well, increase the radius, become larger, the gold nanometer become larger, it's 80 nanometer, the scattering, Larger than absorption. So it has a strong scattering ability. Okay? So why you you know this nanoparticle pulling a solar cell, you have to think about this. Okay? If it's very small, it just absorbs light but not scatter. Okay? If, 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 if a light it can scatter light, okay? But it cannot too light because of the active stiffness. Okay, so this is the key idea. Okay. This is the important thing. Another This is the most important thing. Okay. This is a physical picture, very important. I just draw a scattering, I just draw a scattering cross-section or extreme cross-section with a metal sphere and a dielectric sphere. This is a piece. For metal sphere, you can see same size, 100 nanometer, gold. This is a 100 nanometer dielectric, the refracting deck equals to 3.5, similar to silicon or something. It's loss of this. First thing you can see that I, I split the extinction cross section with a TM contribution and T wave contribution. There are two kinds of contribution, TM and T wave. Okay. I said for sphere I can split it for TMR and TR. I split two. You can see T wave compared to TM wave is ignored. Ignore. Right. So the first peak, a fundamental peak, is a TM1 mode. Okay, it's, it's a fundamental peak. Another thing is the broadband called loss. The broadband. 
Another is dielectric. You can see dielectric is very interesting. Many, many peaks. So that's three. The first peak, total, I mean Tm plus Te. This is Tm. The first peak is what? Is what Te wave. This first peak is Tm wave. Okay? The first one is Te wave. The second peak is Tm wave. Te1, Tm1, then Te2, and Tm2. Okay? This mode called whisper gallery mode. It's just whisper gallery. It's whisper gallery. You can see that the first fundamental peak is T1 for dielectric. This first fundamental peak is T and Y. Why? So that is quite different. Because metal, Imsum is negative. Remember I said Imsum, if Imsum plus two, Imsum M plus uh, Imsum metal plus two Imsum D is about zero, this is the resistance of a plus molecule. This can be achieved to here, but it cannot achieved to dielectric. So this is the reason why the dielectric of fundamental peak is T1, and then Tm1, then T2, and Tm2, something like this. You can see the distance. Larger, smaller, smaller, smaller. So this will be, if a higher mode is smaller, smaller, it's called whisper gallery mode. This, this is for the time. Another, very sharp. You can see, the very sharp. This is broader. Okay, this is broader. So this is quite different. This is, this is quite different. I will talk about this in the next lecture again. So this is a very important uh, physical picture by the TM wave and TE wave. If you know this kind of peak, you can control them very well. Control the later, it's a whisper gallery mode, it's a plus morning mode, you can control them very well. So for Sophia, there's a rich physics in, in, a, in a extinction cross section of many, many different things. It might become a resonance. Okay, so <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't this uh, lecture. Okay, thanks for attending.